Hello everyone, this is view 2 part 2 and I want to focus on the concept of the crossover point. In part 1, I mentioned that the crossover point referred to the exercise intensity at which glucose and fat contributed equally to the energy production, in other words 50-50%. However, the type of diet regularly adopted strongly influences the crossover point. For example, this figure shows two situations. One on the left, it is the contribution of fat and carbohydrates to energy production as exercise intensity increases for subjects on a high carb, low fat diet. We can see that even though the energy derived from fat reduces, whereas the energy derived from carbs increase as the intensity of exercise goes up, it's interesting that the two lines, the blue representing fat and the red representing carbs, they never touch each other. In other words, there is an elusive crossover point. And this is because the abundance of carbohydrates is so high that it will always be the predominant source of energy for exercise. In fact, even at its highest point, the energy derived from fat does not surpass 40 to 45 percent. Now look at the graph on the right that depicts subjects on a low-carb, high-fat diet. Now we notice that even though the energy derived from fat reduces again as the intensity of exercise increases, a clear crossover point can be identified and it happens at 85 percent of VO2 max. This is in clear contrast with the figure on the left in which the elusive crossover point happens at approximately 50% of the VO2 max. This again shows that the macronutrient composition of the diet largely determines whole body substrate preference. This next graph displays my VO2 max test data showing that my crossover point was also at approximately 85% of VO2 max, which is consistent with the rate or with a high rate of fat oxidation that is typical of someone adapted to a low carbohydrate diet. I also want to draw the attention to the fact that I plotted both the percentage of VO2 max and my heart rate in, bar, in beats per minute on the x-axis. This allows me to use heart rate as an indication of the exercise intensity at which my body shifts substrate preference. Interestingly, I did a test on the track using the Garmin watch and it tells me that my lactate threshold is around 160 beats per minute which is right where there is a sharp increase in energy derived from glucose on the graph. So these are very useful tools in exercise physiology that we can use to prescribe exercise or to elaborate a training program for any, anyone in endurance sports. That's it for now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next. Bye.